Good day. Today I'm going to show you guys how to find the highest common factor. Another name for the highest common factor is the greatest common factor. Okay, let's look at the first one, 56 and 58. Let's find the highest common factor. First step you're going to do is you're going to find the difference. And what I mean by the difference is you're going to subtract the smaller number from the bigger number. So there we're going to have 58 minus 56. That gives us 2. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take this uh, number that we just found and you're going to see if it divides into each one of these numbers. So yes, 56, 2 divides into 56 and yes, 2 divides into 58. So we're going to go ahead and say that 2 is our greatest common factor. Let me show you guys this again with the next one, 75 and 55. So first thing we're going to do is find the difference. So that's going to be 75 minus 55. We know that's 20. Then we're going to see if 20 goes into either one of these numbers. Mm, no, you can see that 75, you can't divide this by 20. You can't divide this by 20. So what we have to do is we have to break down the number 20 into its factors. Uh, let's just go with 4 and 5. Then we're going to ask ourselves, okay, does the number 4, does the number 4 go into 75 or 55? So we know that the number 4 does not go into 75 or 55, but the number 5 does. So we're going to go ahead and say that 5 is the greatest common factor. Okay, let's look at the next one, 38 and 49. So we're going to find the difference, 49 minus 38, that gives us 11. Now we're going to ask ourselves, can I divide 38 by 11? The answer is no. So if I just find 1, and we know that, before I continue, we know that 11 is a prime number, so I can't factor 11 any further than it already is, because it is a prime number. So if I say that 38 cannot be divisible is not divisible by 11 I just have to find one of these numbers that it is not true and then I could cross it out okay now if I cross it out and there's nothing left that means that the number one is the greatest common factor okay let's go ahead and look at the next one 91 and 98 let's find the greatest common factor first thing we do we find the difference that means 98 minus 91, that gives us 7. Now I'm going to ask myself, Can seven? is 91 divisible by 7? Is 98 divisible by 7? So yes, 91 is divisible by 7. And 98 is also divisible by 7. So I'm going to go ahead and say 7 is the greatest common factor. Uh, real quick, as a side note, um, how to check for divisibility by 7. Perhaps you're wondering how I know that these numbers are divisible by 7. So to check for divisibility by 7 is a pretty good trick. Might make another video on this, but just real quickly, what I do is I double the last number. So in this case, number 1, I double that and then subtract it from the, re uh, from the remaining numbers. And if the number I come up with is divisible by 7, then the entire number is divisible by 7. So how that looks is I double the, the number, the last number, that's going to give me the number 2. Okay, one, one doubled is 2. Then I subtract 2 from the remaining numbers. 9 minus 2 is 7. And we know that 7 is divisible by 7. Okay, same with the other one. Uh, I'm going to double the number 8, that gives me 16, okay, and then I subtract 16 from 9. If I subtract 16 from 9, I get negative 7. Negative 7 is divisible by 7. So you can see that both of these numbers are divisible by 7. Okay, starting with the first one, 322 and 343. We're going to find the difference. So 343 minus 322 gives us 21. Now we're going to see if either one of these numbers is divisible by 21. 
A quick way to find if a number is divisible by 21 is similar to the rule for number the rule no, uh, number 7. What I'm going to do is double the last digit and subtract it from the remaining digits. And if that number that I come up with is divisible by 21, then the entire number is divisible by 21. So what that looks like is I'm going to double the, the last digit, the number 2. That gives me 4. 2 doubled is 4. 32, the remaining digits, minus 4 equals 28. And I know that 28 is not divisible by 21. Therefore, I know that 21 is not going to be a factor for either one of these numbers because we eliminated it from just one number. That's all we need to eliminate it from is one number. So I need to break this further down into its factors and then test for divisibility. So the divisibility rule to check for the number three is simple. You just add up, you find the digit sum, and if the digit sum is divisible by three, then the entire number is divisible by three. So the digit sum for 322 is just three plus two plus two. That's gonna be seven. I know that that is not divisible by 3, so I could cancel that out. Next, we're going to find if it's divisible by 7 by using the same rule that I used for the number 21, which is to double the last digit and subtract it from the remaining digits. So 2 doubled is 4. 32 minus 4 is 28. Therefore, 322 is divisible by 7. Now I just need to check for 343. Same rule, I'm going to double the last digit, subtract it from the remaining. So 3 doubled is 6. 34 minus 6 is 28. 28 is divisible by 7. So I'm going to go ahead and say that the number 7 is the greatest common factor. Okay, next problem, the greatest common factor between 530 and 534. First thing I'm going to do is take the difference. The difference between 534 and 530 is simply 4. Now I want to see if the number 4 can be divided into 530 and 534. The divisibility check for the number 4 is to check if the last two digits are a number that is divisible by 4. We know that 30 is not divisible by 4 evenly, so we know that the number 4 is neither a common factor for both numbers. What I'm going to do is split this further down into 2 and 2. Okay, so we know 530 is divisible by 2, and 534 is divisible by 2, so I'm going to say the greatest common factor equals 2. Okay, next problem, 207 and 213. First thing I want to do is find the difference. The difference equals 6. That means that 213 minus 207 equals 6. Now I'm going to see if 6 is divisible into either one of these numbers. For a number to be divisible by 6, it needs to be both, both divisible by 3 and 2. We could automatically know right off the bat that these numbers are not divisible by 2 because they end in an odd number. Therefore, I know it's not divisible by 2. Next, I'm going to check for the number 3. To determine if a number is divisible by the number 3, we simply use the digit sum. So what that means is the digit sum of 207 is going to be 9 because you have 2 plus 0 plus 7. That equals 9. We know 9 is divisible by 3. Okay, 213, that's going to be 2 plus 1 plus 3. We know that's 6. 6 is divisible by 3. So both numbers are divisible by 3. I'm going to say 3 is the greatest common factor. Okay, last one, 56 and 66. First, I take the difference. I know the difference is 10. Okay, then I look at the numbers. I see that neither one of these numbers are divisible by 10. So what I need to do is break this further down into its factors. 
I know that neither 56 nor 66 are divisible by 5 because they do not end in a 5 or a 0. So I'm going to cross that out. I can see both numbers are divisible by 2. So I'm going to say, go ahead and say the greatest common factor equals 2. So now I will show you the traditional way of finding the highest common factor. What you're going to do is you're going to break down each one of these numbers into its into all of its factors and then you're going to find which ones are similar. So what that looks like is 15. The number 15, we could say that that's 3 times 5. And the number 25 equals 5 times 5. Then all we're going to do is we're going to match one for one. We're going to circle we circle one in the top we have to have a matching one excuse me if we circle one let's say we circle one here we have to have a matching one down here so I can see these match but three and five do not match so I'm gonna say the greatest common factor equals five okay the next one 16 and 64 so we're going to say 16 equals 4 times 4. So that's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And 64, we know that's 8 times 8. 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. And times another 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So then all we're going to do is we're going to match them one for one. So here's 1, 2. Here's another pair. Here's another pair, and here is another pair. So what we're left with is four pairs of twos. So we're going to say our common factor is 16. 16 is our common factor, greatest common factor. Okay, our next problem, highest common factor of 100 and the number 65. So we're going to say 100, that equals 10 times 10, right, 10 times 10, 10 is 2 times 5 times 2 times 5. <clears throat> so there are your factors for the number 100, number 65, the number 65 equals 5 times 13. And 13 is a prime number that can't be broken down anymore. So what we're going to do is we're just going to find numbers that match up between the two numbers. So we can see we have a 5 here and a 5 here. <clears throat> nothing else. There's nothing else that's matchy-matchy. So we're going to say our greatest common factor equals 5. <clears throat> now let's compare this with the original method that I showed you in the beginning. Remember, the first step is to find the difference. If you recognize this as a problem by subtracting from a base number, you know we can apply all from 9, last from 10, which means we get our number as 35. <clears throat> now we're going to find factors of 35. Well, first we need to check if 35 can go into 100 or can 35 go into 65. We know right off the bat that 100 is not divisible by 35. Therefore, we need to break this down even further. We know that 35 is 7 times 5. Next, we need to ask ourselves, is seven? can 7 go into 100? No, it cannot go in evenly. Therefore, if we, if we can go ahead and determine that one of these numbers, if one of these numbers is not divisible, if one of these numbers is not divisible by the factor, we can go ahead and cross it out. What we're left with is the number five. Let's see if five is divisible into 100. Yes, 100 is divisible by five. And also 65 is divisible by five. So we could go ahead and say that 5 equals the greatest common factor. <clears throat> now I just wanted to show you this, these two methods side by side. This, uh, this is the method they teach in school and there's nothing wrong with it. It's a perfectly fine way of doing these type of problems. The method that I showed you over here is just basically a shortcut. 
However, you really need to know your divisibility rules, how to how to check for divisibility by numbers, how to check numbers divisible by 7, how to check for divisibility by 14, etc. This other method, you have to be able to break down numbers into their most basic components and then simply match up the numbers together. So I hope this video helps you out. It's a shortcut. I just learned it the other day. It's very, very helpful. This is the uh, the Vedic method for finding the greatest common factor. Um, what I suggest you do is if you have one of these type of problems, the, real, the reason I like all these Vedic math tricks is because you can cross check your answers using a different method. You see in school, if you're only taught one method, if you're only taught one method how to do a problem, and you're not too sure if you get it right or wrong, then you don't have a way to counter check by using a different method. What I really suggest is to learn both of these methods so you have a way of cross checking your answer. Okay, it's just a good strategy to know more that there's more than one way to do some math. I hope you guys get something out of this. If you enjoy these type of videos, please like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Thank you.